brothers and sisters, this is Onyx, and I want to share a piece that I wrote a few years ago called Immaculate Misconception. Sister J was kind enough to allow me to put this on her page, so here is Immaculate Misconception. From motherland to foreign land, from beaded necklaces to chains, from Africans to Americans, from warriors to slaves, from ritual to religion, from culture to Christ. From my shade to amen, they said Jesus died for our sins. How can we believe their white God died to save our black skin? Knowing they hate us the way that they do, they never worship a God they didn't believe hated us too. We choose to worship their God. We worship it more than they do. Yet our ancestors suffered, their masters tortured and beat them, made them bow to their knees and surrender to Jesus. But we don't honor our ancestors for the blood that they shed. We sit in church crying with Christians because Jesus suffered and bled. We don't look to our history for truth, we look to their Bible instead. But it's time for truth to be spoken, something's got to be said. Something's got to be said, it's time we tear down their lie. Something's got to be said, it's time we do more than survive. Something's got to be said, for it's time we remember. We're not African Americans. Blacks, colors, or niggers. We're African people who strayed way too far. We're African people. We deny that we are because flowing like poison, their religion has spread, growing like cancer by our ignorance fed. We've been manipulated, lied to, deceived, and misled to the point that our ancestors' voices are dead. It's time we connect with our ancestors, disconnect their religion. Our ancestors were Africans before they were Christians. Our ancestors were Africans before they were slaves. It's time we start living and thinking the African way. In spite of what we've been taught, it's time to forget what we learned. It's time for truth to be spoken, but for truth to be heard, something's got to be said to cause our thinking to change. Somebody's got to say something. I've got something to say. Before Adam and Eve, before Abel and Cain, long before Noah's Ark, before the floods and the rains, before Abraham, Isaac, Moses, Joseph, and Jacob, before Samson, Delilah, Goliath, and David, before the prodigal son returned to his home, before the children of Israel for 40 years roamed, before resurrection, redemption, rebirth, and religion, before Christians created chaos and division, before a biblical fairy tale was accepted as true, before the testament all before a testament knew there was Osar and Aset, Heteru, Geb, and Sebek, Heru, Seker, Tehudi, Amen, Hera, Kahudi, and Ma'at were the principles guiding our ancestors' lives. Not a religion whose God was hung on a cross left to die. Our ancestors listened to spirit and by spirit were led. Not by a book trimmed in gold words of Christ written in red. Our ancestors walked in and lived in a spiritual dimension beyond Jesus Christ's understanding or their God's comprehension. By the time a virgin named Mary gave birth to a savior named Jesus, our ancestors had constructed the Sphinx and built the pyramids of Egypt. Their white folks stole us and sold us and told us surrender. They called us unworthy, called us ungodly sinners. They told us our God was a heathen and we practiced the pagan religion. Their God commanded they practice a form of cannibalism. Taking holy communion in remembrance of his death, they drank their God's blood. They ate their God's flesh. They arrested innocent women, put them in prison, charged them with crimes they'd never committed. In the name of their pagan religion, they told lies so convinced that when they put these women on trial, no one would defend them. These women healed those who were sick before modern medicine existed through a method of healing which we call holistic. Yet these daughters and wives and mothers of children were unjustly tried and unjustly sentenced. And it was the Christians who preached thou shalt not bear false witness who falsely accused them and convicted them as witches. It was the Christians who judged them and sentenced them to die. It was Christians who tied them to stakes and burned them alive. It was Christians who said they were evil and followers of Satan. It was the Christians who murdered those women in Salem. And the same Christian who started the witch, witch hunt crusades wrote the Bible they lived by. His name was King James. Meaning the God of the Christians allowed his words to be written by hands washed in the blood of innocent women. And in this Bible we trust that never acknowledges us. Not from the first word in Genesis to the last word in Revelation does her Bible mention our people, our history, our nation. Not one chapter, one verse, not one scripture, one sentence. So how could their God have created Africans in his image? Because if their Bible is true, Africans never existed. Their Bible says, by his power, Jesus raised up the dead. 
Their Bible says by his power, 5,000 people were fed. Their Bible says by his power, Jesus turned water to wine. He healed those who were crippled, gave sight to the blind. By his power, he opened deaf ears and the mute may speak. But where does it say by his power, he unshackled our ancestors' feet? Where does it say by his power that he set our ancestors free? Where does it explain why his power still ain't set us free? We're not free as the people because we're still believing their life. They don't need to shackle our feet. Their religion is shackled our minds. I don't care what you believe. They believe in a God with white skin. And if it's their God that you're serving, it makes no difference to them whether we're saved or we're slaves. It really don't matter because in their minds, we're still serving a white man as our master. So if you believe you're a Christian, if you believe John 316, if you believe their God is your God and his death set you free, then why did your God perform miracles and free the children of Israel and never even attempted to free your African people? Why did your God curse the Egyptians and take their riches away and let the Christians get wealthy and your ancestors as slaves? If their God, who's your God, loved you so much he died, then explain this, this to me. Tell me why your God freed the children of Israel from slavery by killing all the firstborn Egyptians. But when your ancestors were in bondage and saved by the Christians, when Christian hands locked their shackles and Christian hands held the keys, why didn't your God kill their firstborn? to set your ancestors free. And if hanging Jesus on a cross was to save you and me, who are our ancestors saving as they hung from the trees? If, be, if Jesus saved us by suffering in, in hell for three days and three nights, who are our ancestors saving by suffering each day of their life? If beating Jesus with a, with a whip was to save us from sin, who are our ancestors saving as whips to open their skin? Who are our great grandmothers saving as they were raped and violated? Who are our great grandfathers saving as they were stripped and castrated? Why were our ancestors tortured? Why were our ancestors slaves? They suffered far more than Jesus, but not even themselves could they save. So how can we as their descendants spit in our ancestors' face by serving a God who ignored them as they screamed for his mercy and grace? How can we as their descendants call Christians our sisters and brothers when they snatched our African babies out of the arms of our African mothers. How can we as their descendants bow down and give praise to the God of a people who stole our language, our name, stole our culture, our heritage, our spirit, our will, then in our face shoved their Bible and told us thou shalt not steal. How can we as their descendants, the God of our ancestors, reject but give our glory and honor and praise and respect to a cross they burned as they slip ropes around our ancestors' necks? How can we as their descendants believe Christianity could save us when the Christians who preached it were the ones who enslaved us? Peace, brothers and sisters. Thank you for letting me share my peace.